What's going on, world? This is your girl, K. Rich, and I'm coming at you from a PK perspective. Yeah, it's been a minute since I've done a video. Um, no particular reason, um, but I know that I have to be more vocal in this season. I'm actually sitting in my car, peeling a grapefruit that I'm about to uh, eat. And as I'm sitting here, I'm meditating on some things um, that I've been going through some some scriptures to go with them some words that people gave me you know as I'm, I'm I was uh you know just living we live we go through we have trials we have tribulations we have battles I mean it's constant it's nothing new right yeah, when you're in the body of Christ and I was like you know it's crazy how we have these things that are attached to us and and then we come to Christ, we come to God, and we get delivered. And we are like, yes, you know, and it's great. Praise God for deliverance. We actually get delivered. We're not playing. We're serious. The the, the, the Spirit of the Lord has moved upon our lives in a, uh, a, 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 most of the time, indescribable way. And we are delivered and set free. But something that I'm noticing um, is that we act like once we're delivered, Whatever was battling us, whatever was fighting against us was like, well, they made it to Jesus, so I lost this one. And they just mosey on down <laughs> to whatever other things they have going on, <laughs> right? That's not it. That thing is fighting for you. That thing is after you. That thing wants to be back, you know, in that position in your life, on the throne of your heart. It wants to be back in full effect functioning at full capacity, it wants to be where it was. It wants to come back to its 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 host or its its body, whatever you want to call it. It's trying to get back. So it's you are not. We are not above temptation. And I think that we feel like, oh, I'm delivered. So, you know, I'm good. Like you're not above temptation. And don't think that that thing don't have strategies or other paths or other ways or other slides to get in. And it's when you least expect it. Right. It's when you feel that's why the Bible talks about, you know, you know, let him that think he stand take heed lest he fall. Because sometimes we think we're beyond that thing. And I'm so sorry, but none of us is beyond sin. Right. If Jesus was at all points tempted, then what makes you feel like you're not going to be tempted? Especially with something that you used to just get on down with. It wasn't a temptation. It wasn't no internal turmoil. You was getting it all in 100%. And we forget that our flesh still wants that. I was talking to one of the amazing, dope, phenomenal, awesome uh, women of God that is in my life. Um, who I consider a mentor and, you know, I was telling her, you know, I was like, you know, half, I halfway want to do it. Half of me, she was like, stop, stop. All of you wants to do it. All of your flesh wants whatever it is. It's not halfway. It's not like half of your, cause there's no good that dwells in the flesh. Right? So it's not halfway. It's not, I think a part, only this part of me wants all of your flesh wants to sin. Period. All of your flesh wants to sin. We have to renew our minds and overcome our flesh with our spirit, right? Having our spirit bring that soulical realm under subjection, which will then bring our physical body under subjection, right? So, you know, don't feel like and don't get so. I don't want to say that word, but don't get so. high on your self when it comes to the praise you give the deliverance right because it's still a process and that deliverance is it could be whole it could be everything but that thing and your flesh that thing and your flesh want to be joined together again whatever it is whoever it is and the devil don't care which way it comes It ain't got to be, he don't have to send a dime because you might be, you know, dodging all the dimes. He might send you a good old six with a great personality, <laughs> right? It don't have to be a million dollars. 
if he can take what you desire in and of yourself, whether it be a business, whether it be a partnership, whether it be a relationship, it don't have to be the full fledged thing, right? The, the, the pinnacle of whatever that thing is to catch you off guard. Most of the times we get caught, caught off guard with 60%. And now because you you were looking for something that was just going to be right up your alley, right? Sometimes, sometimes it's not that way. Now there are, now you know the devil ain't got no new tricks. So sometimes he is bringing that, bah, and it just blew your mind, right? And that's because your your mind was not where it was. Like I was reading and it was talking about setting your thoughts on things above, setting your affections on things, you know, that are that are spiritual. And I was like, OK. And it was like, what does it mean to set something on? And he used the, the terminology of like a thermometer. I mean, I, I mean, um, uh, come on, Lord, uh, like your 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 thermostat, right? You're at home and it's winter time. You turn that thermostat up to, to 70. It's going to stay on 70. You have set it on 70. And even if you open the door and the cold wind blows in and you feel the temperature drop and you're like, oh, man, as soon as you close that door, the thermostat automatically takes the temperature of that house back up because it's going back to what it was set on. And when we set our minds on things above and the things of God and we set our thoughts on those things, no matter what comes our way, we'll go back to that setting. Right. No matter what comes to knock us down, because we're set on that, we will cache back. So the first thing you think about in the morning, what is it? Is it God? Is it lust? Is it, you know, what is it? What is the first thing? What is it set when you go to sleep at night and you're what is the what is your mind automatically cache over to? That's what that setting does. So even when you go through a battle, or even when something comes to test or tempt you, you refer, you automatically go back to what it's been set on. Your heart is set on. Your mind is set on. Your thoughts are set on. You know, your desires are set on. And these are all matters of the heart. And people think of heart. They're only thinking about emotions, right? When you talk about, you know, guarding your heart, people just think about, oh, don't let nobody come in and, you know, pull out the love. It's that's not the heart that, that we're talking about because your heart is made up of your thoughts. It's made up of your emotions. Your heart is made up of your desires. That heart that the Bible speaks of and what sits on the throne of that heart is what is set. So make sure, guys, make for certain that you, the, the throne of your heart is occupied by God and that you set your mind, you set your thoughts, and you set your affections. This is all intentional on things above, on the things of God, right? So, you know, I'm just I don't want people to get caught up in the slippage of things. Right. Because once you have been um, fully converted, we don't fall. We make choices. So people are like, oh, I just failed. No, 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 no. You made a series of decisions that came to an ending choice. You don't just, you know, walking down the street and slip up. And next thing you know, you fornicating in the middle of the street. No. You ain't slip on a banana and, and landed on somebody. You made a series of decisions that led to the final choice to commit that act. So I don't want us to be afraid to be real. Being being open, honest and transparent with where we are and what's going on with us spiritually and emotionally. I don't want us to feel like to because to say I fail means I didn't have control. And we do. You have control of yourself. Um, I don't want us to just get caught up in just being out of alignment, having our thoughts out of whack, and that be what takes us down, right? So I'm just sitting here. I'm giving y'all what's what's going on with me. I'm being, you know, giving you, you know, what I see, what I feel, what I'm experiencing, you know. And I don't want nobody to mess up, man, because we can get this close. We can get this close. So I'm just encouraging you guys, man, make sure your heart and your affections are set on the things of God, set on things higher. Make sure that that you are you are rooted and grounded and that your decision is made known and that God is sitting on the throne of your heart. All right. Y'all go have a wonderful, phenomenal weekend. Um, go do something. It's going to be nice. Well, here in Florida, <laughs> Tampa, it's going to be nice. 
Might be a little chilly, but throw on a little long sleeve shirt. I'm gonna go, you know, go do something. Go, go spread the love of God. Go witness to somebody. Go, you know, get a good workout in. Go be great. Work on that business plan. Do what you do, but do it for and to the glory of God. All right? Peace.